Hey guys, it's Brandon. I'm gonna do a vid today on a game I played last night, which was um, an interesting game, um, a good game in the sort of the maybe a mix of exchange slav slash Catalan setup. That uh, my opponent made a tactical error and uh, gave away a piece, and uh, ended up going into an end game where he got into Zugzwan, and uh, in the end. I was up, I think, like two queens after promoting some pawns, and uh, got a got a literally last second, last millisecond checkmate. So it's pretty exciting. So I thought I'd take a look at that one. Um, I was white. I played my usual d4. He followed up with d5, so we have the queen's gambit. We played the slop defense, which is solid. Um, and I haven't studied. Uh, enough theory to really know how to deal with the Slav properly as white, so I usually end up playing the uh, exchange in some variations, most variations actually, because I don't really know what I'm doing, but uh, anyway, so knight c3, this is the no bloom, I think, variation of the Slav defense, but uh, I'm not particularly sure. Uh, Matt Pullen gave me a lesson once on uh, on this note bloom variation that's uh, green castle block as you guys know him um, although I guess he introduces himself as Matt Pollen so in any case I don't I don't really remember what the line was that we went over so I'm just playing some solid stuff here he maybe wants to double my pawns and I thought that I would sort of like in the Nimzo Nimzo Indian I thought I'd play Queen C2 like in the Capablanca variation of the Nimzo Indian to prevent myself from doubling pawns um, h6 here, I guess, just a defensive long-term flight square, stop a knight from coming to g5 move, but I ended up exchanging the pawns anyway, so this is sort of an exchange variation of the Slav, and I didn't really need to play queen c2, but, you know, so after the exchange now, I have a nice, nice pawn center, uh, and an, an open b file, which once I get developed, I'll stick a work on, so... Just developing the pieces here. This maybe you could argue is a bit of a boring setup, and some would certainly argue that uh, it doesn't give White very much of an advantage uh, out of the opening. This sort of Catalan almost type setup, but I've been playing with it a lot recently, and and I figure that maybe it's boring, maybe it's not so aggressive for White, but uh, if it's good enough for Anand in the in Topolov in the World Championship, I shouldn't I shouldn't have too much. Uh, to complain about so uh, he castles this is just positional stuff rook to the open semi open b file um, I guess it's just uh, improving the position of his knight here it doesn't look like it has any prospects of going anywhere and, and this knight actually in a few moves plays a semi important role for me I'm playing uh, I'm playing I'm preparing um, e4 here I suppose I could have played e4 right away um, just you know something to free my game up a little bit uh, now I'm here. I start to get a little bit, uh, not necessarily nervous, but it's it's never good to see um, your queen op opposing uh, your opponent's queen either on a diagonal or a file or something horizontal when you have a, a rank when you have no protection on your own queen. And right now my queen is unprotected. So, for example, if this knight here on uh, f5 could come and give check or something. I mean, it can't at the moment, but if it could, then this queen would fall. So usually in blitz, I think it's, I find it's just safe that when you see possible tactics like that, just sort of get out of them as soon as possible. So that's, that was the idea behind queen to d3. I want to keep the queen on this diagonal for, for e4, but it's protected now by this pawn. So there's no tricky stuff with the queens being opposite each other on this diagonal. So he plays f6, um, maybe preparing e5 in the long run. Um, not really sure. But uh, so e4, uh, d takes e4, queen takes e4, and, and now I have a bit of a, I have, I have a lot of pressure on this e file, a rook and, and queen uh, bearing down on the e file. This pawn is defended at the moment by the bishop, but um, so nothing I can do there at the moment, but in the long run, it might be annoying for him to have that queen and rook bearing down on the file. He plays a, a move here that I think he just miscalculated. Um, 
I think he, he just he just miscalculated and decided that uh, this movie plays knight h4 and drops a piece because my queen is protected, so I'm not forced to capture his queen with my queen. I think he thought he could move the knight out of the way and force a queen exchange with queen takes queen, knight takes queen. But my queen is protected by the rook, and also once I grab the knight with my knight, it's also protected by my bishop. So he just loses a piece there. And he decides to go in for the queen exchange. This is the, I mean, in theory, this is the absolute wrong thing to do is to uh, to exchange pieces when you're already down a piece, especially queens. I mean, you want to give yourself as many chances as possible when you're down a piece like this. But uh, I think here, actually, I should... Let's see, what did he play next? F5. Yeah, so he's attacking my bishop. I think I probably should have grabbed this knight. Just trading pieces and giving myself a completely open B file, I think, would have been a good move for me. But uh, I don't think this what I played here was very strong. At the very least, I should probably have tried to keep the bishop on this long diagonal. Um, but uh, I played bishop D3, just getting the bishop out of there. Um, yeah, so if I had played... If I had played, kept the bishop on this diagonal here, this 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 move here wouldn't have been possible because it would have hung a knight. So if he couldn't play, you know, this uh, b6 move, he would have had to either move his rook to b8 or or something before he could develop this bishop because this pawn would have hung. So he would have lost some tempos. But so I don't think d3 was a particularly strong move on my part, but I wasn't particularly concerned about it being up a whole bishop. Um, so I'm just getting my knight back into the game. I think the knight. I just want to get the knight into a, a good position and offer as many trades as possible. So I think this knight comes to e4 shortly. So he's developing his bishop. Yeah, this knight comes into e4. And uh, so he, again, is pursuing the completely wrong strategy of, of trading pieces, and I'm happy to allow him to do so. Um, so now I'm attacking this backward pawn on the e-file. He defends it. Maybe... Uh, so I had to get this this bishop out of the way in order to bring this other rook to put pressure on the e-file, on the e-pawn. It's like Henrik Danielson says, you want to attack your opponent where he's weak. Um, so he plays the rook here attacking this pawn, which I defend here. G5 attacking my bishop. Where does this go? Just comes back to D2. Now he brings the king in to defend the pawn because he knows... Um, I'm going to be putting pressure on it. So, pressure onto the uh, onto the e6 pawn. I'm not sure why he plays king here. Maybe just to make a move. I think he could have played uh, maybe c maybe rook to c6. Might have been annoying. Um, although, if I could get my bishop onto this diagonal here, that would have been a, an annoying skewer. Would have, would, have won, would have won an exchange. So, this, I was just hoping to get a little tactical trick in here. Um, we're about even on time. Oh, this guy was rated 1754. I forgot to mention that. So, fairly good player. But um, I was hoping to that he would notice, not notice that uh, it was a, e6 takes uh, d5 it wasn't possible because that would drop a rook. So, e, e takes d, rook takes, rook takes, rook takes. I've won a rook. Um, he noticed anyway. But I grabbed the pawn. And uh, here he's threatening just to trade down all the rooks and win his pawn back, which is fine with me because I'm up a bishop. So the more pieces I trade down, the better it's going to be for me in the long run. So I, I decide to encourage him to, to trade down all the rooks here, and uh, he does. So we get a bunch of exchanges of rooks, and now he just, again, just in, the, in theoretically this is just the complete wrong plan to adopt when you're down a piece. So. Giving, now I'm the only person with a piece on the board. This e pawn is isolated. Uh, he's gonna ha maybe have problems uh, defending that. Although my pawns are a little bit scattered here too. Uh, but I'm up a piece, and this should just be an easy win in the end game, which it does turn out to be. So, time to get the king involved. And the good thing about having a piece in the end game, and this is, uh, I'm gonna, I decide to target this. Uh, this b5 pawn. The good thing about having an extra piece in the end game is that you avoid uh, getting into Zugzwang yourself, which is what's going on here. So now his only move to save the pawn is uh, king to b4. And at this point now, I can play bishop 
just about anywhere, but bishop here is the best because it immediately leaves him with a zugzwang. He has, no, he has no move to make that doesn't make his position worse. This pawn is blockaded, so he can't move it, but even if he, even if he could move with forward one, it would give me a pass pawn. This pawn obviously can't move. And if he pushes this pawn here to h4, then I just grab it with, uh, with my g pawn, and I have another pass pawn. So his only option is to move his king somewhere. Can't go king b6 because that's cut off from his bishop. Same here. Uh, that's cut off by the king and the bishop. So the only thing he has is to move his king away from the defense of this pawn here, which means his pawn here on b5 immediately falls. So king b5. And now this is just an easy matter of uh, using these pawns to get to the end of the board here. I just sort of decided at this point he's, he's really putting up a struggle to... Um, to stop this pawn from queening, and I, was, I thought maybe there were some stalemate possibilities here uh, in the long run if he decided to put it. So I decided just to forget about to, to forget about these pawns over here, and since my king is much closer to getting these pawns over here on his king side, I just forget about that pawn and mop up these pawns on the on the king side. And now I'm down to 16 seconds, and he's down to 27 seconds, which this game is obviously uh, completely over and one for me, but he decides to play on, hoping to, I guess, draw on time, which seems a little bit unsporting to me, in a, especially in an unrated game where there's no points at stake. But in any case, um, getting close to time here, and uh, just trying to queen and get some kind of checkmate before my time runs out. I, I have problems sort of uh, finding mates easily when, uh, when, I'm in, when I'm in time trouble like this. So I'm just sort of trying to work my pieces in, find something. And finally, with 0.2 seconds on the clock, I got the queen a1 mate. So uh, that game was interesting, and uh, it had an exciting finish. Um, with 0.2 seconds on the clock, I managed to get the mate. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and uh, we'll see you next time.